moment. Um, uh, for those of you who are still cold, we're going to start the calisthenics portion. Going <laughs> <laughs> right on up here. Uh, nobody looks so excited about doing that. Matt, come up here. All right. My name is Matt, and I'm the speaker chair for SAS really this year and next year. And I am happy to introduce Dave. So, Dave is the speaker chair over at the PCCA, and he's very, very good at not calling attention to cool things he's done. Turns out one of the cool things Dave did last year was go to Malawi and take and he also took something like nine hours of underwater footage from Lake Malawi. So when I found out, I guilt tripped him so he was willing to give us a talk. Here's Dave talking about allowing from new perspective. Yes, my name is Dave. Um, I am the speaker chair at the PCCA and I'm also the editor of the Signal News. I'm being bent into being president there, I think, next year. Somebody's going to try and make that happen. I don't know. It's about time. Oh, <laughs> bro. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. So I'm going to speak briefly about my trip to Lake Malawi. It was actually quite enjoyable. You'll have to speak up. 16 hours of flights and uh, the many hours of underwater that we got to do. It was back last September that we went. It was a uh, Every year, Larry Johnson now of Toronto goes. He usually goes with Odd Coney, but Odd tends to go every other year. Larry was nudging other people to go, and then there's a gentleman by the name of Richard Turzo, who lives down near LA. He's like, Dave, you need to go. You need to go to Malawi. I'm like, yeah, I do. And he's like, you need to go now. I'm like, all right, fine. So I dug in, I got my scuba cert in August, not August, May of 2012 and dragged myself to Malawi. So the opening slide is the uh, the jetty at Red Zebra Lodge, the Lady Louise in the background. Um, Red Zebra is where Stuart Grant had his exporting operation, which is now run by his widow, Esther Grant, and her son, David Nkwasi. So Lake Malawi, some some simple facts, ninth largest lake in the world. It's uh, approximately 360 miles long, 47 miles wide. It's bordered by three countries. Let's see if I can remember them. Malawi, Tanzania, and Mozambique. And it's the third, the third largest of the three of Rift Lakes being Lake Victoria, Tanganyika, and Malawi. There's many other small ones around. Yeah, but they, they call it them. So, I opened it with a cupcake because it seems every time I leave out of San Francisco, I'm on a red eye. So I get myself dinner and a cupcake. And I'm figuring to myself, this is the last chance I'm going to have decent food in the next month. So I grab myself a chocolate cupcake from Kara's Cupcakes and sit down and have a decent meal and then go taking a red eye, which turns into another red eye, which turns into a morning flight out of Addis Ababa. And this is when the realization really set in that I was in trouble. This was a 14 hour flight, essentially, from DC to Addis Ababa. And that's all I really had to watch. What, where's Addis Ababa? Addis Ababa is in Ethiopia. So it's northeast of, of Malawi. So this is the first dawn we saw, and we got to see it out of an airplane. And that was the dawn coming, uh, coming and landing, actually, at Addis Ababa. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm almost there. Not quite, but I'm almost there. I've got one more flight. After that last flight, I really had to use the bathroom. So we get to we, we get we get to the terminal in in the long way, go to use the bathroom, I look up. I kid you not, that dragonfly was six inches long. It was a beast of a dragonfly. I'm not sure it's very clear on there. Yeah, it was a beast of a dragonfly, and I'm looking up there going, 
Is everything else going to be that big? <laughs> That's your flight. Yeah. <laughs> These are the two gentlemen that I met actually at the Long Week. So on the right is Richard Turzo. He lives down, down south. And then you have Juan Murillo, who actually lives down in Brazil. His flight landed five minutes after ours in the Long Week, which is nice. So we all piled in this tiny little car and drove from there to a place called Cool Runnings, which is on the lake. It's run by a uh, expat from Britain, Samantha Ludwig, and she does a lot of work there with education and, and whatnot. But she has a nice little, we'll call it bed and breakfast, lodge type place. Um, this is how we drive. We're supposed to be on the left hand side of the road, but we decided to pass people, you know, on the wrong side, up a hill, blind corner, not a big deal. I mean, it's just, there's Africa. It's what they were doing. You get here and then you end up behind, you know, an African taxi. If there's a place to stand on it, somebody's going to be standing on it. And that's how they move. So you get 10, 15 people on there, and we're passing through. Then you find one passing another. We fall behind the Dahatsu a good hour. So. Finally get to our first destination, which was Cool Runnings. It's a nice, nice lodge. This is where we were sleeping. I had the bed on the left, Juan was on the bed on the right. Half to half the mosquito nets, because malaria is rampant through there. Um, unfortunate thing with the mosquito nets is they're now used to catch fish. I brought this slide in, something that, uh, these two gentlemen from Germany, something that I've learned that we as Americans don't quite get to do, but a lot of Europeans and Canadians get to do, they started their trek in South Africa. And their goal was to do six weeks all the way to Egypt. And they have no, they have no problem getting their visas, no problem getting anything from all the countries they need to go to. As Americans, we're not well liked for whatever reason. We don't get to do that, unfortunately. Wandering down the lake, because Cool Running is on the shore, you get down to a fishing village. All of those are drying mats that have the lake sardine on them. There's just thousands upon thousands upon thousands of fish. They dry the sardine, turn fish meal, food, along with other things. But you've got fishermen that go out every night, they've got their boat, they've got a little light on the end of the boat, and they just net up all the fish that come up. This gentleman's Felix. Felix is the bartender at Cool Runnings. You can get two beers. You've got Carlsberg Green and Stout. And then you can get yourself a Coke, a Sprite, or a Fanta. That's it. That's all that they have. But anything else you want, he can get you, you know, you just give him enough quacha, which is the uh, currency there, and he can get you anything you need to allow you to get fuel. Because fuel is a is a, a commodity that's a that's very hard to come by there. Dave, can you stand back? You want me to stand back? Thank you. So you can see what I had there. <laughs> I finally realized that you know we get there and there's actually good food. So in the upper left hand corner is what they call rump steak, which is actually a sirloin steak. It's the best sirloin I've ever had. It's fantastic. The seasoning on it was perfect. They cooked it perfectly. Everything comes with the comes with um, chips, french fries, and then a salad. Beautiful food. I could have had two or three of them. Had one. Or you can have the campango, which is the catfish. Fresh out of the lake, tastiest catfish I've ever had. Comes with chips. Breakfast usually consists of this. It's French toast. You all had all the important bacon, bananas. Good food. <laughs> you know, have to have your bacon. So. Then we leave, we leave Cool Runnings, and this is generally what an average village looks like. Yes, you're watching the sign, you're watching from the side of the There's no forage for those goats at all. No forage for the goats. You'll notice there's two types of roofs on the houses. There's a thatch roof and there's a tin roof. Differentiate between poor and not so poor people. The not so poor, put that in air quotes, had tin roofs. Whereas the poor people had a thatch roof. 
you found bricks everywhere. Bricks were just laid out everywhere. And then you find, when you get on the main road, everywhere the place is burning. You get off the airplane, as Chuck, and Chuck Rambo said, you get off the airplane, the first thing you smell is burning. Because they're burning everywhere just to, to keep the, the brush down. Something they don't like, they don't like. They don't like snakes there, and the easiest way to keep the snakes down, you burn. So, average road, it's actually the only paved road from where we were in Sanga Bay going down to Red Zebra. And when we come in, get to the Red Zebra compound sign, Red Zebra Lodge, where we stay most of the time. Coming through here, on our left, the very first thing you see is Stuart Grant's grave. It's actually a very large grave. After that, you move in, he's got the holding tanks for water holding, and then you actually get into the, the fish compound all the way back. There are vats and vats and vats and vats of fish that go on for a good few hundred yards. How many acres does he have there? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't even tell you what they're in hectares either. It's, there's a fair amount of space. He's got it's it's bricked in. He's got it's a compound. It's it's all walled in and everything. Get a pass. We're actually finally get past all of the uh, the fishway stuff. We get to the houses and the chalet. Are you hanging off the tire? <laughs> yes, I am hanging off the tire. No, actually, I've got my GoPro. Oh, okay. And I've got this little call it monopod type thing. Yeah. I just hang it off the side. You know. It does its little thing. I mean, we used it today, you know, filming catfish in, in the back and whatnot. These are the chalets that we stayed in. There's Eight bed, there's two beds, two room, there's four rooms, and sleep eight total. Got to keep your doors closed. There are still wild animals. Uh, they had a mamba slide into one of the rooms while we were there. Not one of our rooms. It was one of the uh, crazy Dutch's rooms. Uh, so always want to keep your door closed. They also, they also have problems with very large ants. Ants get everywhere, so they keep the ants down. Occasionally get some large, large lizards and whatnot. So this is the rotunda. This is where we we had a uh, had breakfast, lunch, and dinner while we were there. And it's a served family style, so everybody shows up, including Esther Grant, and we all eat together, which is actually quite nice. Very important. They only take visa. No MasterCard, no Red Express, <coughs> no Discover, no diners, no diners, just Visa. And I walked up and I'm thinking to myself, all I've got is my MasterCard. And I'm thinking, do I have enough cash on me? Because we paid most of the way with cash, and the, the actual Safari portion we paid with cash also. So I bring enough cash, or am I actually have to use a card? And I brought enough cash, so it was a good thing. But if you do go, only Visa. This gentleman's Mike. He is the bartender at the Rotunda. He'll get you anything, do anything for you. They have one more beer here. We've got Carlsberg Red. So you get red, green, and stout. And then they've got your three, got your three soft drinks, and you get water. They actually have water in it, which is quite nice. So. so this is our fourth person, Zoe Johnson, Canada. So happened it was his birthday, so we had to celebrate his birthday. We had a, we'll call it an interesting birthday cake. I'm not sure what kind of flour they used, but it, it was good nonetheless. So we celebrated his birthday the night before we left. So here we have Esther Gray on the left, David Aquazi on the right, and I was kind of fascinated. We're in a I'm not sure if we call it third world country, and they're both on their cell phones, yammering away about something. And Esther was talking about the fish they were bringing, bringing back from the, the north of the lake, and David was talking to somebody about his other business he has. 
down in the long wing. That is um, the Coast Guard. <laughs> they, they dumped the boat. This, you're in trouble. They dumped the boat there, and it just sank. And it's only in about five feet of water, and it's been sitting there years, from what they tell me. So it's yeah, just right at Resident Lodge, right there. So, so now we're getting out. We've actually gotten out. This is in Balway Rock. So there's the. The, the famous fish that comes out here is the autofiring slithermate Zimbabwe rock. It's blue fish, bright orange blaze across the top. I never saw it. It's, you see this little rock here? It's 500 meters to the bottom. So you gotta figure there's a lot of rocks all the way up top. To give you an idea, we're moving into our first video of underwater. I start, see the starting? We, we typically when you start in an open water dive situation, you drop down the anchor line. You have no idea where you're going. You could just drop straight down and down and down and down. So I'm kicking out away from the boat. And let's see. Hey, there's the anchor line. You just drop off down, and to the to the anchor line, it was about 40 feet till I even saw a rock. <laughs> and then there's me just continuing to drop down. I just to actually get to where I wanted to be, I got to about 75 feet. So yes, you can see me upside down. <laughs> it's amazingly clear, isn't it, what a GoPro can do. Oh, there you are. Yep. You look less worried right side up. <laughs> Do I know? <laughs> yeah. a, a note for those scuba divers out there. Black masks are a beautiful thing. <laughs> because you've got the semi-clear masks that are around. If you get any sunlight that comes in, it's a just nasty glare. When you have a black mask, all you get the light is through through your through the glass shell country. It's quite nice. You stayed warm enough with no suit? I stayed warm enough with no suit. I'm wearing shorts and a shorts and a t-shirt. That's it. Other people were wearing a one mil, two mil suit. It was 75 degrees. It was 75 degrees at the surface. It was 75 degrees 100 feet down. It didn't change. I, I was fine. I had no problem whatsoever. So to give you an idea of Zimbabwe Rock, this is a vertical wall. I don't see the bottom. The vertical wall goes up a good 25 feet before it curves over. And it just goes. And we're swimming along it for a good 30, 40 feet. It just keeps on going. Zimbabwe Rock is a very large place. Even though you see this little tiny rock, or a couple rocks, it's a rock pile that just keeps on going down, down. There are caves throughout the whole system. And if you want to get to the really neat looking fish, the peacocks and some of the outer fairings, you got to sneak into the caves, tuck in, climb underneath things, Twist around and find stuff. Are there electric cats in Malawi? I am not aware of any electric cats in Malawi. If you notice, the fish don't care what up or down is. They orient to the side of the rock and hey, they're going down. I'm going sideways along the rock. another lodge you see now, Fat Monkey's Lodge. Actually a really nice lodge. It was in Monkey Bay. On the beach there, there were six or seven lodges, Gecko Lodge, Fat Monkey, a couple others down the way. We stayed here. All different owners? All different owners. <coughs> another important note, cash, cash only place. So, they don't sell. They don't sell on credit whatsoever. Bring your cash. It's all that's good. Are all the camps uh, owned by expats, or, or um, some are, some are not. There's a lodge that is owned by that's further down. That's owned by an expat American. 
that's a diver. He has a has a catamaran on the lake. Um, I'm not sure who owns Fat Monkey. We really once once we got to Red Zebra, Esther Grant organized all the other lodges for us and negotiated all the pricing on the nights we were gonna stay because we bounced on the boat down down the lake down the southern portion of the lake and then back up along along the line. So house geckos. The notion is if you have a house gecko, it brings you good luck. I don't know. We just saw a lot of them. They're all over. So apparently we're very late. This mosquito nest people poop off you too because they walk on the ceiling. Yeah. They poop and it bounces off the mosquito nest over the nose. I never had that problem. Yeah. <laughs> mosquito nest is it. Another important sign. Don't drink the water. That's why we've got Coke and Fanta and, and Sprite. The water there is probably not the safest water. It's not filtered like we have here. So, and there's, in the lake, there's schistosomiasis, or Bill Hartsfield, as they call it, which will give you some pretty bad stomach issues. <laughs> Carlsberg Stout. After a long day of fishing, that's what Rich likes. Rich loves his stout. That's all he would drink, is like, give me a stout. Some odd things you'll see in the lake. There are plant life in the lake. It is there. So you'll find plant life. You'll find the occasional pickup truck. Did you get decorate your tank that way? I don't know how it got there. How far out is it? But it's 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 a it's a pickup truck. And this was uh this was out at Namalengi Island. So <laughs> it's out there. It's out there. Even at, a, even at a low period, I don't think you could drive that far out because it's pretty shallow all the way out there. We're only in about 20 feet of water. But the, the fish don't mind. They, 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 they enjoy it. So yeah, it's, it's a reef. I unfortunately didn't get the otters, but there were a couple of otters that were bolting back and forth, back and forth. They come by you and it's just, a flash of bubbles. Is it just one type of plant? Or is it... I am not sure. My guess is yes. There's probably a few more. It's Val. It could be. So then you come across the occasional diver, wherever he may be. Hey, there's actually sound to this one. Can you hear myself breathing? Oh, that's a metal grate. I'm not sure where that came from. This was this was at another dive site. This was at Domway Island. It's a Roman shield. Be nice if it was. Like I said, you come across divers, and you'll find. At least for me, I didn't like staying in one place. I had a video camera. I wanted to go and move and see things. And different people had different techniques with diving. Juan hovered, wouldn't lay on the bottom, would hover and just sit there and sit. And he could hold his breath. And we'd all be done. And we'd be on the boat dry. He's still under 30 minutes later. And then you had Rich. I didn't get any video of Larry. Larry disappears, kind of like Odd Conies does. They just go off and do a thing. Rich likes, admittedly, I didn't get a good picture of him. He likes leaning on the rocks and bracing himself and not moving when he's when he's taking pictures. But when you're when you're using a GoPro, you don't have a viewfinder. You just kind of point and pray. <laughs>
Whenever you see a jar like that, it's usually when I ran into something I wasn't watching. We're on a little, this was on the eastern shore of the island. So we had, this, or the eastern shore of the lake. We had this pickup truck way on the western shore. So we're on the eastern shore. And I'm just going along and sort of, I spy this odd looking device. Let's see if I can pick it up. Right in the middle. There's an alternator. <laughs> just sitting there. Um, probably came from the car. Um, it may have come from the pickup. I'm guessing it was used as an anchor and just got left there. Mm -hmm. one, of the oddest, one of the oddest things I saw when we were at Macacola Reef It's not this fish. But I came over this, this rock. And brick formations. I am not sure how. I'm betting these were used as anchors as well, because we're, we're on a, a reef that doesn't, that doesn't use, a, that you can't see. And how, I, yeah, but how were they spelling something? How did they get down there? They're 40 feet down. To Atlanta. <laughs> crazy Germans. Yeah, it like could be crazy, crazy Germans. Germans. Or the Dutch. This is the random things you see. Typically from different dive sites, we end up sleeping on the top of the boat. It's fiberglass. You just lay down, you're in the sun, you relax. The boat takes four hours to go from point A to point B. So you end up just getting out, stripping your gear off, throwing it down. And then you climb on top of the boat, fall over, not move. Uh, tilapia, not Ramphacomas. This gentleman had done his fishing. We inquired how much it was going to be. And since he saw Uzungus on the boat, white people, he charged, was attempting to charge significantly more than what we could get at the market. So unfortunately, we didn't buy from him. But he had he had baggered cats in there plus the large the large tilapia, so that's a day's worth of fishing. This is one of our dive sites at Sano, Tasano Rock. That rock is, to say the least, large. It's fifty yards by fifty yards. About five stories high, and I got to swim underneath it because it sits and it curves out from underneath the bottom. So you go underneath the rock, and there are caves underneath there where all the cool fish hide. And I believe, yes, one of about four marmalade cats I saw the whole time. Marmalade cats are actually a very rare fish. Any of the species that are OB are very rare. So now we've got, let's say, 15 minutes of just underwater stuff that happens. So this is about, these are just little highlights of what happened to me while I was there. Get attacked by a Clarius cat. <laughs> did not did not like seeing the uh, the lights. He actually bit the light. A little melanocromus that decided that he liked that spot right there. At any given time, when you see the red rocks, I'm usually in some form of large rock pattern and or cave where these rocks are some of them are as big as this room. You can swim around, swim under. I tried to incite this guy to nip at the camera. He wouldn't do it. <laughs> My little GoPro. How large is he? Uh, carapace was about like this. 
was not big at all. Six inches total length, probably side to side. So I followed him along this giant rock. on the rock, there's more fish pool on the rock than algae. <laughs> um, and the, the crabs are all over the lake. <laughs> now I'm wholly under a rock here. I am in a cave. That silt is probably two feet deep, and there's a nice little eel. It's the only eel I saw, maybe 18 inches, probably shorter. I was told if I held out my hand, he would have come right up to it. But that was after the fact, so. Doesn't that have stuff growing on it, or? I don't know. It might, it might have a parasite. There are a lot of fish with parasites. It's the only I saw. That was at, that was at Otter Point. Right in the middle of the screen is your nice little peacock. And peacocks are not that common. They hide in the caverns and crevices. So I spied this one here. And there's not a lot of space there for him. And then I realized, oh, there's a whole lot more. Now, the peacocks you see on the shops and whatnot, they're all larger. They're all greater than four. They're five, six inches in length. I was lucky to see maybe a fully going up peacock there that was four inches. They're small fish. So here's the bagger that Rich wants. Is that size limitation due to predation or uh, just competition? Uh, competition, feed. Typically in, in tanks, in, in captivity, they just grow larger. Right. We feed better. So we feed better. Mm -hmm. That's a three foot cat. Look at the fry. The, uh, the male bolted. He, as soon as he saw me, he just gone. Female stayed with the fry. There's a couple hundred probably down there. You see him going up the side of the rock. Is something that would predate? Go after the fry? Um, not at that size. Mm -hmm. at, when down around half inch, there are cichlids out there. Because mm -hmm. it looked like you're protecting it from something. Big yeah. catfish. This is the only place. One of the only places we I saw peacocks in open water was not in any cave systems. There were some rocks with what we'll call a small cave underneath. But it's not like they're in large, large areas like Otter Point or Zimbabwe Rock. And you can see the tritus moving by. It's a fairly decent current. My goal kind of was to find a peacock at every dive site we went to. We went to 19 dive sites, and I think there's only two that I didn't find a peacock at. They all look the same to me, unfortunately. If, if Steve Loveland was there, he could identify what was what and how and why and me. I just knew it was a peacock. <laughs> the 
about this time also is when I contracted a nice little bacteria. I ended up with a staph infection oh. in a finger. I almost lost a finger. I won't go into that. If you have questions about it, come see me after the talk. It was gross. It was pretty gross. I came upon these two little fishes and they had been fighting and they fight and they fight and they don't stop. There's millions of acres to go. <laughs> But I want this one right here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how it was. Mine right here. I, I, I actually have a video where I'm at the service and I aim down. And I see zebra, 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 zebra. And they're all, you know, three feet apart from each other's zebra. And they're not moving, but they're staring at each other. While equidists apart. <laughs> Is that a Christian? Yeah. Yeah. Might very well be. But they've got plenty of landscape to go where they want, but no, they want that spot right there. Yeah, there's all kinds of fish that go through. There's a, a little nimbacronus that goes through. <coughs> It's either a zebra or an afro. And I believe it's a zebra. And he just liked that little crevice there, and he would defend that crevice. There were points where I would be swimming along, and I'd turn around, and there would be a thousand fish staring at me. <laughs> and then I swim some more. Then I turn around, it's the same thousand fish staring at me. They would follow me around. And then if I stopped and I had my light, my camera lights on, they start circling me because they liked going into the light. Check this out. That's really what it felt like. They were, they were hungry. <laughs> they were waiting. Are you being stalked? I felt like I was stalked. In fact, I was nipped a couple times. <laughs> Did they take a chunk out like Ron? No, they just took hair off. <laughs> this is the, I believe this is the lineye and he's hunting. He'll sit and he'll put his chin on a rock. Wait for a sec. And then he moves on. And we're only in about five feet of water. So rubble field about five feet of water. And he's moving along. And then at one point, we end up seeing a female. Chase up to the female. I actually have a lot more of that. She completely scorns him and he goes off and does his thing. See sponges there? I didn't see any sponges. I probably just went right by and didn't notice them. So here's a training from Snack Adventure with Fry. Just a school fry there. And I'm sitting there just waiting. Like, you need to open your mouth so your fry can go in. You want to go home. And I sat and waited and waited. And she was like, she had nothing to do with the baby. 
When you were diving, did you find yourself just getting lost in the adventure, as it were, just being sort of oblivious to everything else? Oblivious? Uh, second, you know, diving considerations were, were like secondary. You weren't really thinking about it. You were more entranced by the fish. Um, no. You were keen. I always had a keen awareness of my depth and how much air I had left. Were you, do, were you doing buddy dives? Well, the so, idea is you're supposed to do buddy dives, but when everybody's a camera, they don't want to get near anybody. Right. Else. You're you're a hundred <laughs> feet apart. You're a hundred feet apart, and. Granted, if I had to, I could probably swim 100 feet on a breath of air. If I ran out of air and I needed to get to Rich and yank his, uh, his secondary and, and start breathing it off his tank. But yeah, you're, a, you're at least 100 feet apart. There were some, time, some points where I have no idea how far we were. And we were in, at depths of up to 100 feet. So, so Where were was, you in relation to the boat at this point? Uh, and in a lot of these dives. Oh uh, gosh. Hundred yards difference. There was a point when I was at Zimbabwe Rock when I surfaced, I couldn't see the boat because I, I I ended up on the wrong side of the rock. Okay. So at, at the farthest point at Zimbabwe Rock, I was probably 150 yards off at Macacola Reef with that current. I got pushed off the rock off the reef. I was probably 250 yards off. I could just enough see the see the boat that. I realized where I was, and the surface current was worse than the uh, the uh, current at about 15 feet. So I had probably about 700 psi of air left. I dropped back down, and I sucked that tank dry, getting getting back to the boat at 15 feet. She's picked up right there. Well, at the very end. Yeah, at the very end. Earlier too. So. How big was she? I'd say she's max of 10 inches. This was the one well, of the last places we stayed. Sunset Resort. Sounds like a nudist colony. That place, <laughs> it really felt odd because it was really, really nice. It would you feel at home here. Wow. There are rose gardens everywhere. It was all private suites. It was 20 bucks a night. Wow. You had camel rides, if you wanted camel rides. They had a petting zoo. They had pools. They had ponds with cichlids in it. I mean, it was all, I mean, it just went on. And they had they had 250 private suites. You could retire there. So it was, it was a really nice, nice, nice uh, resort in the southern tip of the lake. There, it seemed like it was on all the time. Um, but they, there were, they may have had generators, we never heard of. There was limited electricity in other parts. At Sanga Bay, at Cool Runnings, we had our electricity turned off occasionally. Uh, at Red Zebra, our electricity went off once. So, yeah, yeah. not every night. Not every night. Oh. At Nakudzi Lodge, which I didn't show you because it's probably the most dilapidated. The electricity didn't go off, but I went to take a shower, and I'm halfway through my shower, and they turned the water off. <laughs> so, we mentioned, you know, they burn everything, burn the trees, um, those are baobab trees. Baobab trees don't get very tall, just really, really wide. I have to thank um, our boat crew, you had Leighton and Dawa Dawa. Didn't have, didn't have any pictures of them in here, but without the two of them, the driver and our tender, these guys are not big men. They five, six, five, five. They are two of the strongest individuals I've ever met. They would be able, they easily lifted 50 pound rigs, leaning over the side of a boat, down about four feet straight out of the water, one-handed and bring them on the boat. They made, they made our trip a fantastic trip. Anything we needed, they could get. They helped us set up our rigs every day. They handed our cameras down to us. They returned our, we returned our cameras to them. Everything we needed, they, they got for us. Um, something I do want to talk about briefly is there's the Netbuster project in Lake Malawi. It's around the Malaria Islands. 
it's, it's done fantastic in Mario Land. And um, the babes, the babes in the Cichlid Hobby, have raised a lot of money for it. And um, they've taken that money and they've, they've built many more of these devices, which is basically a floating can with hooks and blades on it that cut nets up. The reason why is because of this. This was at Guadalupe Island. This is a this was an abandoned net, and I went down it. This was, I've got a minute long going down the side of a net. There's fish in it. The danger with this net is one, I could get caught in it, and since it's a gill net, it's I had I had two knives with me. I could cut myself out. The danger with it with the for the fish is the fish get caught in it, they'll die. You get enough fish in it, it sinks to the bottom, they'll rot out, and the net will come back up. And it's just a constant killing of fishes. How big are the nets typically? Oh gosh, a net like that. Are you talking the uh, the spacing in the, the nets? No, the about the size of the net. Oh gosh, it's hundred feet long. Yeah. Six to eight feet in depth. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for having me. Did you see any uh, big cichlids? Define big. Like Champs Chromis? Uh, we did not see any Champs Chromis. Champs Chromis are open water. And like we said, you know, big in, a, in an aquarium, yeah. not necessarily big in the lake. I mean, Trey and Chromis get big. Yeah. Trey, Trey, Trey and Chromis, they're going to in a tank and you like this. Trey and Chromis, like that. I did see some uh, uh, Dimini Chromis Kawingi. They were actually some good sized fish. You couldn't get within 25 feet of them. They were just not having anything to do with it. They made bowers that were eight feet across and I've got video of going coming across those bowers and there was a point where I came across a couple dozen bowers and each bower had a fish but they as soon as you got near them they just they bolted. Yes? So what's, what is the biggest thing that you saw there? The biggest fish? Probably the Kwingi. No. Catfish, or there was a mormorid. There was a mormorid which I didn't get a good film of because they didn't like the light. They're nocturnal. All I saw was the tail wagging, and they were pushing three, four feet. So they're big mormorids, not like. And at night you can swim with them, just not during the day. They don't like. They're not day fish. Would you take another trip? Would you take another trip? Absolutely. It might be going back this coming September. You can hit any of the other lakes? Not yet. Goal is to go to Tanganyika. I'm going to, on a side note, I'm going to Palau in May, so do some saltwater diving. Yeah. So. Is that still in five degrees in the water? Yes. You have like 100 feet of 75 degrees. Uh, is it everywhere in the Malawi lake or just in that place? Well, we were in the southernmost portion of the lake. Should I just look through it? Uh, nice. Portions. Or slides. Is there a higher temperature than 75? So we were here in Saguenay. We stayed, if you guys can see, we stayed here. We went up to about this point because this is where, right by here is where um, the border is. So we came down through here, bounced through here. Solomon Rock is about here. Wazoo Island is here, a couple spots in here, up and then back to Sega Bay, which is where Red Zebra Lodge is. This whole portion of the lake where I was, 75 degrees. I'm not, I'm sure further north it might be a little cooler, maybe a little warmer, but there there was no thermal climbs. It didn't the temperature did not drop at all going down. It, it was it was just 75 degrees all the way through. In the other part of the lake, do, are there facilities similar? There are, there is, in Monkey Bay, there's a couple dive shops up on the western shore, up north there's a dive spot, and there's one in Mozambique as well. 
There's also a couple collecting stations in those places as well. Are the fish a lot different or very similar? The fish differ all throughout the lake. Uh, the fish all along the Tanzania, Mozambique, the eastern shore are different from the fish on the western shore. There are some similarities, but they're, they're, they're absolutely different fish. So, I mean, it's a, it's a big lake. Is it only shallow water or It tended to stay, well, when we were in Namalegi Island, which is where I saw most of the ballast area, no deeper than 15, 20 feet. So, and the, the, the bottom, if you work on a, a rubble field, that silt, there's a point where I ended up in a, under a rock, pinned myself under a rock, in about 50 feet of water, I'm like, okay, how am I getting out of this? First thing I did is I just put my hand into the silk. It went all the way up to here. So, there's nothing, there's nothing down there. So I ended up having to, to I considered taking my, my, my tank off and pushing it through. I, I actually have film of it where I just let the camera run. It's bouncing and dragging on the side of the rock. And I finger walked along the side of the rock to pull myself through a little, a little hole between three other rocks. There are hippos in the lake. There are also crocodiles. We did not video see. What was that? Where's your video of the hippos and crocs? I have no video of the hippos. I have a picture of the hippo. It's a bad picture. Didn't stay for the hippos because the hippo can demolish a wooden boat. So the crocodiles, only saw one at Red Sea Bros about that big. The one that was at Chofu where we camped out. We did not see, but it, they, based on the print size, it was about six feet long. So it was probably killed shortly thereafter by the, the uh, village nearby. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.